Size and shape are some of the best places to start when identifying birds. While it may seem difficult, learning the basic bird silhouettes is very useful. These include hummingbirds, songbirds, shorebirds, owls, and more. Let's start with hummingbirds. Hummingbirds are the smallest bird species in the world. There are 352 species in the hummingbird family. The three main points to identifying these birds by size and shape are as follows. They are tiny. The smallest species, the bee hummingbird, measures around 2 inches, and the largest species, the giant hummingbird, measures around 8 inches. They have long and thin bills. Hummingbirds use their long bills for reaching far into flowers. They have small feet and no visible legs. When in flight, you probably won't even notice their tiny feet. Songbirds are the second to the smallest and make up more than half of all bird species, including sparrows, robins, warblers, wrens, and many more. They are relatively small. They range in size from around 3 inches with the golden crown kinglet to 3.3 feet with the superb lyrebird. They have small to medium-sized bills, short necks, moderate to long tails, and medium to short legs. Warblers have bills designed specifically for insect eating, while finches have bills for cracking open seeds and nuts. Woodpeckers are the birds you see clinging to trees and pecking holes in them while searching for food. There are 233 species in the woodpecker family. The key field marks to notice are They are small to medium sized. The size of woodpeckers range from the bar-breasted piculate size of 3 inches to the critically endangered imperial woodpecker size of 23.6 inches. They have medium-sized and pointed bills, relatively short necks, moderate to short tails, and very short legs. The bills of woodpeckers are very strong to avoid breaking when hammering on hard wood. Their tails help to support them as they climb trees. Shorebirds are usually seen running on the ground. These include sandpipers, plovers, and avocets. They are small to moderately large. Sizes range from the least sandpiper's length of 5 inches to the far eastern curlew's length of nearly 26 inches. They have medium sized to very long bills that may be straight, curved up, or curved down, short to long necks, short tails, and moderately long to very long legs. A good example of a shorebird with a curved bill is the American avocet. American avocets have a long upward curving bill. The long legs help shorebirds when they are wading in water by keeping their bodies mostly dry. Wading birds are often seen wading in water. These include herons, egrets, ibis, storks, and cranes. They are large to very large. The size of wading birds range from the least bitterns length down to as small as 11 inches to the marabou's storks length of up to 5 feet. They have very long necks, long bills that may be curved, very long legs, and short tails. The long necks, bills, and legs come in very handy when foraging. The long bills are great for spearing fish or catching other food. The long necks help them reach farther distances without disturbing the water, and the long legs make it easier to wade through deep water without getting their bodies wet. Seabirds are found out at sea, along the coast, or flying over bodies of water. This category includes pelicans, gulls, and terns. Here are a couple key points to note. They are small to large. Sizes range from 5.1 inches with the least storm pitchel's length to the 11 foot wingspan of the wandering albatross. They have medium sized bills, moderate to short necks, and short tails and legs. Their bills are designed for eating fish, crustaceans, jellyfish, and more. Swimming birds, also known as waterfowl, are, as you might have guessed, found near or in water. This type includes ducks, loons, geese, swans, and grebes. Let's look at a few key points. They are usually rather large. The size of swimming birds or waterfowl range from the least grebe's smallest size of 8.3 inches to the trumpeter swan size of up to 6 feet. They have medium sized bills and moderate to long necks. There are several types of bills for swimming birds, from the shovel-like bill of the northern shoveler 
to the thin bills of grebes, each is uniquely suited to the species. The necks of swans are the longest in the swimming birds category, while ducks and grebes have much shorter necks. They have short tails and legs and webbed feet. While some other species of birds that aren't generally classed with waterfowl have webbed feet, swimming birds are known for their webbed feet. These paddle-like feet enable them to swim efficiently. Chicken-like birds, also referred to as game birds, include quail, partridge, grouse, and turkeys. They are medium to large sized. Sizes range from the blue-breasted quail's small size of 4.9 inches to the green peafowl size of up to 9.8 feet. They have large, stocky bodies, small heads, small, slightly hooked bills, and short to moderately long necks. When seeing a species such as the ruffed grouse from a distance, they often look like a slightly misshaped ball due to their stocky bodies, small head, and short neck. The Indian peafowl, on the other hand, has a longer neck, making its head more visible. They have short to long tails and moderately long, stout legs. Many chicken-like birds use their tail feathers in courtship displays to attract mates. Examples include the Indian peafowl, wild turkey, and greater sage grouse. Raptors are meat-eating birds that hunt during the day. This term includes eagles, falcons, hawks, and vultures. They are generally large. The size of raptors range from 5.5 inches with the black-thighed falconet to 4.9 feet with the secretary bird, or the wingspan of 10 feet with the Indian condor. They have small hooked bills and short necks. Their hooked bills are excellent tools for ripping apart flesh of fish, carrion, and other prey. They have moderate to long tails, medium legs, and long curved sharp claws. Their long, curved, and sharp claws are often referred to as talons. Raptors generally have three talons pointing forward and one talon pointing backward. This arrangement is called raptorial. The back talon, known as the hollux, is usually longer than the three forward pointing talons. When a raptor catches its prey, it will typically push the large hollux through its prey. This terminates the life of the prey and also helps the raptor get a better grip for carrying the prey away. Owls are meat-eating birds that hunt at night. There are over 240 species of owls across the two families, with the main owls being in the Strigidae family and the rest, including barn owls, being in the Titonidae family. For identifying by shape, here are the key points to note. They are medium sized to large. Sizes range from the elf owls 4.9 inches to the endangered Blackestone's fish owls 2.3 feet. They have large rounded heads, no apparent neck, and some have ear tufts. Perhaps great horned owls are the best known owl in North America for their ear tufts, making it look like they have horns. The Eurasian eagle owl also has very prominent ear tufts. They have very short bills, short to moderate tails, and long, curved, sharp claws. The bill of the owl is short, curved, and downward facing. It is typically hooked at the tip for gripping and tearing its prey. Once the animal is captured, the scissor motion of the top and lower bill is used to tear the tissue and end the life of the prey. Like other birds of prey, owls have a locking ratchet-like mechanism in their foot, which keeps the toes locked around a perch or prey without the need for the muscles to remain contracted. This enables the owls to sleep with the muscles of their feet relaxed. Another amazing ability owls have is being able to rotate one of their forward pointing toes to the back making it easier to hold on to prey that is struggling to get free. Ospreys, though not an owl, also have that ability to rotate one of their forward pointing toes. Though all of this is helpful and useful for identifying by shape, once again it must be compared with all the other techniques you'll learn in the series to make a positive identification, especially for birders at the beginning of their journey.